Hey everybody, as you guys can see from the topic of these notes, we're going to be looking at some basic differentiation rules. Uh, many students might call these the shortcut rules. Um, it's a way to find derivatives without having to go through the long formal definition and uh, the limit process. Our first rule is going to have us look at a, um, a constant function. So just a real quick sketch over here of a of a constant function to help a constant function to help us uh, with this rule. Let's consider um, the constant function y equals 7. Uh, let's consider a couple of points on this constant function. Perhaps this is at uh, 2, 7. And then perhaps picking a point over here to the left of the y-axis, let's look at the point negative 1, 7. If you guys were asked what's the rate of change, or the slope of this constant function, it's very obvious that the slope is zero. Uh, and as a matter of fact, no matter what constant function we choose, uh, the slope of that line is going to be zero. So the constant rule is pretty easy, um, the idea of it anyway. Um, let's also look at some notation that's going to help us in our work. So let's just all, first of all, consider a constant function that we'll call c. So that's a c. Uh, it could be 7, c could be 10, c could be uh, negative 4, c could be pi. Uh, if we want to find the derivative of a constant function, we know the answer is 0. And that's easy enough, but let's look at the notation as well. Okay, If I were to uh, look at this notation, d over dx, that's telling us to perform some type of operation. So we're going to call that the derivative operator. So when you see d over dx, or a rate of change with respect to x, that's what that's implying, of a constant function, we know the answer is going to be 0. Okay? So I just wanted to kind of introduce you to what we might call the derivative operator. Okay? So let's come over here and uh, put this in equation form. So let's just say that we have some constant function y equals c. Okay? If I were to bring in the derivative operator on both sides of this equation, because we remember that what you do to one side of the equation you do to the other, it might look something like this. Okay, So what does this mean to us right here? Well, from our earlier look uh, in section 1, we saw that we could call this the rate of change of y with respect to x, dy over dx. Okay, So then we come over here, we perform the calculations, so now we know from up here that this derivative is 0. So let's look at some other examples where we are going to get zero, but for the purpose of looking at notation as well. Um, and um, before we do do, do, do that, let's, uh, let's kind of remind ourselves about something we read about earlier as well. dy over dx could also be written as y prime. Okay, so just two different notations that represent the same idea. All right, so let's look at some examples. Consider the function, the constant function, f of x equals negative 3. We know the rate of change is 0. We don't want to just throw down a 0 as the answer. We want to use the correct notation. Um, if I were to bring in the derivative operator on both sides of the equation, d over dx here, and uh, if I could fit it in over here, d over dx here on this side of the equation, this notation uh, can be represented with the prime symbol, f prime of x. So we perform the calculation, the operation over here, we have f prime of x equals. Well, this is going to be 0. Okay, looking at um, some additional information here, too. Let's say that we have a constant function, in s, in terms of t, and that constant function is uh, 7. Okay, if we wanted to bring in the derivative operator, just notice the change in variables. It's going to be a... Um, a rate of change with respect to t, like over here, was with respect to x here, and a rate of change with respect to t. So this notation might look something like s prime of t equals, and of course the derivative with respect to any variable of a constant um, function is going to be 0. So just some notation here in, to help us in our work. All right. So that's, that's pretty much it, the constant rule. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the power rule. Uh, 
Okay, for the power rule, we want to make sure that we're working with a power function. So, so what, what exactly is a power function? Well, I want you to think of uh, like a polynomial function. Think of, of a base of x with a numeric exponent. So whatever number that may be, any real number there. Let's just say we have maybe x to the third, x to the one-half, uh, x to the negative seven, where n is any real number. Um, in the past, what we did with the limit process was we uh, found the limit of the difference quotient, and it was quite a lot of work. Um, but with this shortcut rule, it's going to simplify our work greatly. So let's bring in the derivative operator. The base is x, so it's with respect to x. Okay, so two operations must be performed for the shortcut in finding the derivative of x raised to some n. Okay? And the two operations are going to be multiplication and subtraction in that order. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the exponent, whatever that is, and we're going to multiply it by the coefficient on x, and currently it's a 1, so that product is n. So it's in fact bringing that here in front. n times keep the base of x and reduce the exponent by one whole. So the power rule for power functions um, is the two operations of multiplication and then reducing the exponent, exponent by one. So let's look at some examples of that. Uh, consider the cubic function, x cubed. Okay. If I wanted to find the derivative, I could bring in the derivative operator on both sides of the equation. If you weren't told in words um, what, they, what you were asked to do, but you saw this notation, that would imply to you to find the derivative. And because we've identified this as a power function, a base of x with a number exponent, um, we can apply the power rule. So over here, working on this side of the equation, that notation becomes f prime of x, the derivative, the slope formula. Okay. And then here, 3, keep the base of x, and reduce 3 by 1 whole, and that uh, becomes squared. So had we gone through the limit process the long way, uh, finding a derivative using the formal definition, um, through all our work, we would have uh, had an answer of 3x squared. Okay, so let's look at another example. Okay, let's consider the cube root function, the cube root of x. Okay, we need to do a little work on this. We need to do a rewrite, so to speak. Uh, we need to get it ready for um, differentiation uh, with the power rule. We need a base of x with the number exponent. It has to fit this form right here. So our rewrite on it, first of all, would have us take and rewrite this as x raised to the one-third power. Okay, it all looks good now. It's a power function, base of x, numeric exponent. So now we can bring in the derivative operator on both sides. Okay, well at this point, I'm not going to bring in the derivative operator because as you well know, what we're doing is finding the derivative. So if the instructions were to find the derivative given this function, uh, then we would know that this operation right here, d over dx, would be, be involved. And it's not something we have to show. So the derivative of g of x okay, is g prime of x. Well, that implies that if I'm differentiating g of x, um, that I need to come over here and also differentiate using the power rule x to the one third. Okay, so what do we do? We bring the one third in front as a multiplier on the coefficient of one. We keep the base of x. Subtracting one whole from one third gives us negative two thirds. So that's our answer. We're finished. You could write it in another form if you wanted to. You could write it in radical form as opposed to with rational exponents. So thinking about what this is and, and digging back into our Algebra 2 um, background, with a negative exponent, we could make it positive by bringing x into the denominator. So looking at the 1 third, we have 1 over 3 here. Okay, taking this whole expression to the denominator, okay, we could write it as 1 over x raised to the positive 2 thirds. Okay. And if you wanted to continue further on that, uh, you could put it back in radical notation, keeping the g prime of x, 1 over 3. Okay. And um, in the fractional exponent there, what we can do is uh, we can keep the numerator as our power and the denominator as our root. So it's 1 over 3 times the cube root of x squared. So that's an index of 3, so to speak. 
So which answer is correct? All of them. As a matter of fact, you were done with the calculus right here. Uh, these two later steps is just us writing um, that derivative in a different form using our algebra background. So that's the power rule. Okay. Uh, let's look at another situation here. Let's look at the function h of x equals 1 over x cubed. Okay, well, it's not quite a power function yet because it's written in fraction form. We need to pull x out of the denominator and, and, and make it look like um, this, this function right here. So a little bit of algebra. So, so pay attention to the notation. I'm keeping h of x, which means I'm not performing any calculus here. I'm going to do a rewrite on this, preparing it for differentiation. Okay, so pulling x out of the denominator requires us to uh, have x to the negative third power. Okay, now I'm ready to bring in the der derivative operator because this is ready for differentiation. It's prepared. So I'm going to say, all right, well, the derivative of h is h prime, so let's differentiate this function here. Negative 3x, now be careful with the negative exponents. Reducing that exponent by 1 takes us to negative 4. Okay, uh, you could rewrite this with a positive exponent. Now notice I'm keeping the prime notation. All that's important here. Okay, look at the x to the negative 4. If I wanted that to be a positive exponent, I could pull that down to the denominator, x to the fourth. Uh, the negative 3 would remain in the numerator, and that could be considered our, our derivative then. Okay. All right. And, and just a note here about um, the bigger picture and what we, we might want to do. For example, let's say that I wanted to write the equation of the tangent line to this graph at a particular x value. If I wanted to write the equation of the tangent line um, to the graph of 1 over x cubed at, say, x equals 2, x equals 2, I would need to find the slope. So I'm going to evaluate h prime at 2, everywhere I see x, I'd replace it with 2, I would get the slope at that x value, okay? And then to uh, finish writing the equation of the tangent line, once I have the slope, I would need a point. Well, I have the x-coordinate was given to me as x equals 2. To find the y-coordinate I'm going to be using in point slope, I would have to go back and evaluate the original problem for 2 to get the y-coordinate that belongs with that x. So then I'd have both the slope by plugging 2 into the slope formula, uh, and the y-coordinate by plugging 2 into the original function, and then I could proceed with writing the equation of the tangent line. Okay? All right. Um, let's take a look at the constant multiple rule. Constant multiplier rule, or constant multiple rule. Okay. Uh, this is just saying that if I have a constant, a, a, a constant number that I'm multiplying, say, by a function such as this, and I wanted to find the derivative of that function, okay, this is the operation that allows me to do so. Um, the constant multiple rule says that I could, I could factor out, so to speak, the constant multiplier in front and then just work on differentiating uh, the function uh, part of that uh, equation there. So what does that look like? Well, I've got the constant multiplier, and then we know this operation means uh, f prime of x. This is going to help us, if you look back up at these three examples, this constant multiple rule is going to help us if these coefficients were um, numbers other than 1. And as you can see in all three of these problems up here, um, x's coefficient was 1. So we can handle um, those types of functions by using this constant multiple rule if, if we so choose. Okay? All right. So here's maybe some examples of using the constant multiple rule. Okay? Let's consider the function y equals 2 over x. Okay? Well, it's not ready for differentiation. Okay, what we can do is pull the x out of the denominator to get a base of x here. So the rewrite on that would have us looking at y equals 2x to the negative 1, because we know down here we have a positive 1 exponent. Okay, and if we wanted to bring in the derivative operator on both sides, we could. It's not necessary, but we could. So y prime equals, differentiating this uh, function right here, um, 
we could use the constant multiple rule by pulling the 2 out in front and just differentiating the x to the negative 1 part. Okay, so let me come up over here. So we have y prime equals twice, and we're going to come back here and differentiate using the power rule this function. So that would be negative 1x, keep the base of x, and then reduce the exponent by 1 to uh, negative 2. Okay, so y prime equals and so we have the negative 1 times 2, so that becomes negative 2, x to the negative 2. You're finished, you're done with the calculus, what you could do is rewrite it as negative 2 over x squared. Okay, so that's one way you could use the constant multiple rule. Um, at this point I can tell you that for this particular function, I'm not sure that I would use the constant multiple rule. Let me come back up here and say, let's go back and consider this function um, 2x to the negative 1. Could I just use the power rule without pulling the 2 in front? Sure. Um, and we get the same answer? Absolutely. Let's just say that we have y prime equals, okay, let's go ahead and just use the power rule with this constant multiplier in front here. So doing the multiplication, negative 2, keep the base of x, reduce the exponent by 1 to negative 2. And you can see real quickly that if I were to rewrite this, I would indeed end up with um, the same derivative I found by using the constant multiple rule. So we'll continue in the next video.